Hello everybody. Um, so I have a Whirlpool um, washing machine here. Um, that's what the front looks like. And there's a shot of the model number. Um, so the problem that we had, um, you know, my, my wife was washing clothes and um, it, it uh, kind of stopped in the middle of the cycle. Um, and it, it wouldn't drain, you know, we try to drain it manually. It even threw up an error code. I'll, uh, I'll go over that here in, here in a few minutes. Um, anyways, so what I, you know, what I thought is it's, it's not draining. So um, I've got the back of the uh, washing machine off here. Uh, I've got a bunch of tools and, and wires and everything laying around anyways. Um, so here's the pump. Uh, it's an electric pump. It's uh, 120 volts. So I watched a other, few other videos. Um, I'm not going to show doing it, but I've actually pulled off. Um, the, the pump is back installed now, but I had it pulled off at one point, and um, I, I made up, or I actually had this, uh, I don't know, old cord off of something that I that I had uh, thrown away and um, kept the cord off of. Anyways, it has these nice little clips, and it's, uh, you know, plugs into a normal wall outlet, 120 volts. So that pump is a 120 volt pump, um, and what I was able to do, you know, I... I took the pump out. I, I plugged these in to the pump. Um, down here on the bottom, there's there's two clips. And here's the actual factory clip um, that, that gets plugged in. So you can see it's just two clips. So basically, um, I already had this set up. I got, I got lucky that I, for some reason or another, I had kept this. So I just plugged it into the pump, uh, plugged it into the wall. And uh, actually, I, I put it in this little outlet strip so that I could um, turn it on and off, you know, I could plug everything in and then turn it off and see if it worked. So that worked, um, with the pump out of the washing machine. Um, uh, so I reinstalled it, tried to run it again. It wouldn't work. So I actually took this setup. I, I put water in the, in the tub here and actually ran the pump under a load and it pumped the water out just fine. Um, so then, then my next thought is, okay, you know, there's either a clog, which when I took the pump off and looked at it, everything looked clean, or we're not getting power um, down here to the pump from the washing machine. And if you guys noticed, um, that's what I ended up finding is um, I actually had a severed wire here. So I ran a diagnostics test. I'll, sh I'll show that here in a minute too. Uh, again, I'm, I'm kind of f finishing this up or I believe I found the problem, but um, the you know, what I did to kind of determine that I wasn't getting power, uh, I have the uh, control panel here. I actually also have the, uh, the wiring diagram, and so that helped out quite a bit as well. Um, so what we're looking at is the, the drain pump, and um, there's two wires that go to it. There's a light blue and then a black. And so I traced those all the way back up to where they plug into the to the uh, control panel here. Um, and let's see, I guess we're up here at the top. There's a, a red, a light blue, and orange. Anyway, so looking at the looking at the uh, control panel, um, I've actually got it unplugged, and I, I was doing some testing. So I found the the correct uh, you know plug here with with my light blue um, wire that goes to the pump. And so I just did a, you know, a continuity test with, uh, with my multimeter here. Um, and it's clicked off. But basically, you know, you put it on and, and when I, I touched uh, this, this blue wire, you know, I stuck a, a pin in here and then I went down here to the bottom as well and um, touched this blue wire down here and I had I had nothing. So I knew there was a break somewhere or I assumed there was a break in the wire. So um, when I wasn't getting power, again, I'll, I'll go over the diagnostics. I didn't know if it was a, a break in the wire or if it was actually the, the control board just not sending the right signal down 
um, to the the pump. So again, by, by doing this little continuity test, I found out that there was a break somewhere and uh, it didn't take me long to find it. I started, I started uh, kind of unwrapping this sleeve here and right here at this bend, you can see it's broken. Um, so anyways, I'm gonna strip that, uh, that wire. It took me a while to find, uh, you know, cause I did a lot of testing on the pump to, to make sure it wasn't, the pump was still good. Um, I messed around a lot looking online, trying to find a, a, a good service manual. I couldn't find one. I have the, uh, the normal manual that they give you when you buy it. And, uh, I also had this wire diagram, but this, this was a lot of help. The, uh, the normal manual, the owner's manual they give you, um, doesn't have any, any details for diagnostic stuff or anything, but, um, anyways, that's where I'm so far. I'm going to, I'm going to unwrap this wire up a little further and make sure that I have continuity, at least from here all the way up, um, to this plug. If I do, I'll probably just splice, put a splice there and, and put that back together. If, if I don't, then there could potentially be another break and I may just rerun the wire. So I'm just going to unwrap that and see what I can, uh, See what I can find there. Okay, so um, I uh, cut back some of this uh, this insulation or protection on the wires. I was going to try to unravel it, uh, but I don't know how far it goes that way or how far it goes up. So I tried to be real careful and just cut out a little section. Um, you can see that I, sh I went ahead and stripped the uh, the wires there. Um, you know, there was that's where it was broken, so I went ahead and. Uh, Pulled the insulation off the wire. I've got my my lead um, hooked up there to my multimeter, and then I just want to verify that there's no other breaks between where I made that cut and up here. So um, you know you can see there is continuity from here at least to that broken area. So I think the wire is good all the way up to there. And now um, all I need to do is is strip this and uh, you know make sure this is good. From here to here i assume it is it was just the break and then uh what i'm going to do is just splice these two back together so. okay so i spliced the wire um i hooked the the pump back up i plugged it back in you can see there's a cover that that i still have to put on um uh, but this is what i did i, I just use an inline splice i have no uh experience doing any of that um, so I used one of these and then I've got some heat shrink tubing that I'm going to, um, shrink on there. I just wanted to make sure it was working. There's also these other quick splices. Um, I don't know the best way, uh, probably the best way is to replace that entire wire. Um, the problem is I don't have any of the clips, you know, that, that go into the, the connector body down here or up top. So, um, again, the, the splice seemed to work and I did, uh, I know it worked because I, when I uh, plugged the washing machine back in, it automatically um, started running the pump. So again, before it was not, uh, the pump wasn't running at all. So I'm gonna go kind of backtrack a little bit. Um, and uh, let me, I'm just gonna turn it off. So uh, I watched another video, a guy showed how to do this. Pretty cool to get into the diagnostics mode. Um, it does say you're not supposed to do it unless you're a technician, uh, but it's my washing machine, so I'll do what I want, I guess. <laughs> um, so with the machine off, it's plugged in. Uh, basically, you just do this three times, um, and it says it's for service technicians only. Um, and the way it was explained is this means okay. This is like forward, um, backwards, and then back or exit is here so I'm gonna say okay okay and then here's where you get into the menu um, so what I did um, we'll look at the fault history real quick so um, I think I told you guys that there was one uh, you know the the washer stopped kind of mid um, mid cycle and wouldn't drain out and then this is the, the F9 E1 is the fault code uh, that it eventually gave and I think that means uh, I think it's on my sheet here. Uh, F9E1 long drain fault. 
so basically it's not draining for some reason um, so that's cool you, you know you can look at that uh, I'm gonna back out of there and one two three so this is uh, where I want to go is the cervix service diagnostics and enter um, and then what I want is the component activation so you can activate any component and actually test it um, you know kind of on the fly here so if you go along there's a research pump and then the drain pump is, is of course what I was having a problem with now before before I made that fix down below and splice those wires um, when I hit this button nothing happened um, nothing at all and I also had um, so before I do that I had also had the, the wires from the pump unplugged and I ran my multimeter to those wires as well I don't recommend that obviously I had to have the the washer plugged in but you're supposed to be getting 120 volts down to those wires I was not getting that so again uh, it, this is not a recommendation to do anything only what I did um, the big thing is is kind of this menu and then the uh, you know looking for that wire making sure you have continuity so anyways back up here we're gonna go to the drain pump I'm gonna click it um, it says it's activated obviously uh, you can hear it running um, and then you hit back and it'll turn it off so anyways it's running now that's great um, I'm gonna you know wrap up the rest of the work down here but again the, the main point of this video I think is uh, um, you know ch check everything so I had I had pulled the inside of the tub out I thought maybe I thought maybe on the inside there was a, a filter or something that was um, that was clogged up and it wasn't draining well. Anyways, in the end, it just be, ended up being this, uh, you know, the wire had, had been cut for some reason. Now I may, I may look into that to see if it was possibly rubbing, but anyways, I'm gonna finish it up here. I'm just gonna heat shrink that. I have to uh, probably pull the pump and actually put this cover back on where it goes, um, rewrap all the wires, uh, put some electrical tape on it, put the back on. Um, so a little bit of work to do, but uh, anyways, it's something to look for, um, a little out of the ordinary probably than a normal, just replacing the pump, um, or the control board. So what really got me into to kind of digging, I was just going to buy a new pump, put it in, tested the pump. It was good. The next thing I thought was probably this control board's bad. Um, so the pump's not a, wasn't as big a deal. I think it was, uh, you know, 30 or 40 bucks online. This control board was a couple hundred dollars, so I didn't want to spend that unless I really, really had to. Um, and it looks like I ended up not needing it. So anyways, uh, something to look for. Good luck to everybody. Thanks. One more thing real quick. Um, I thought I'd go ahead and uh, uh, kind of give an overview of this, this washing machine before I leave. Um, so this is kind of the first uh, uh, is a dryer it's, it's got a lot of stuff on it anyways that's the washing machine number um you know the dryer's a, a matching um just electric uh dryer but anyways um we bought these i think it's just been a little over a year probably my wife and i were looking for the receipt uh when this messed up um i think these have a one-year warranty um on the for you know for the units and and that's you know the plan was just to pull out the receipt and have it fixed uh unfortunately i couldn't find it but i know it's it's not been much more than a year if if any um and and again i i, I wish uh you know i think overall i don't do a whole lot of laundry but i don't have many complaints my wife doesn't have many complaints seems like it's been pretty good up to this point um i wouldn't have expected uh you know it to break down I, these were uh probably close to 800 bucks a piece so i mean after tax and everything you know you're getting up close to around two thousand dollars and and the reason we replaced our old ones was because uh you know i got tired of fixing them and and, and my wife got tired of me uh having to wait for me to fix them so she could do laundry um so i'm, I'm slightly disappointed and you know that i had to uh you know, spend a Saturday fixing this. Um, could it have been worse? Yeah, I think so. You know, I could have had to replace the board or even the motor, you know, cost a little bit of money. Um, but yeah, I'm kind of surprised that that wire broke. 
um, a, a little bit disappointed, but I am glad that it wasn't something more serious. Um, you know, it, it was basically free other than all my time um, that I spent, you know, messing with this thing. But um, anyways, I, I just want to give that quick overview. Like I say, uh, if, if anybody was wondering about it, um, probably if you're watching this video, um, it's too late for you. You've already bought it. And, uh, and I wouldn't say I would never buy it again. I'm just saying, uh, you know, when we bought a brand new set of, uh, washer and dryer set, we, we didn't plan on, uh, having to fix it this soon. I don't think so, but things happen. And, uh, again, I'm just glad it wasn't real expensive. Um, just, just a lot of my time. So anyways, thanks again. Bye everybody.